Am I in focus? <laughs> I can't even see. Oh my goodness. Also, um, I'm gonna apologize in advance. I probably won't be able to speak as eloquently um, because I haven't really spoken to the camera nor have I really spoken to a human being in a long time because I live by myself. Hello everyone, this is Yolanda. Welcome back to my channel. I know it's been such a long time since I have last filmed and I hope the setup is like okay. I just got this super cute little sofa slash loft seat. I don't know what they're called from Struck2 um, delivered over Sunday and I just wanted to try like a new filming setup. Lately I've been really motivated to want to read more books and I was looking to new releases that we will be getting this year. So I did some research on books that I am really looking forward to get my hands on as soon as they're available and I have sort of listed the top 10 books that I'm looking forward to and some of them are so amazing. So I want to show you guys and tell you guys what they are and hopefully throughout this video I'll feel, I'll feel more comfortable speaking to the camera because it's been such a long time. And I don't know, my self-esteem has been all over the place lately and also I did like a lot of research so I've jotted down some notes on my phone so if I happen to look at my phone a lot I'm really sorry but my memories are just not what it used to be. There are a bunch of books that I have listed and um, I have order them in chronological order by the time that they will be released or at least what we anticipate the time that we anticipate them to be released and the first book that I really am like super excited I want to say this is like the top three it's called The Ladies of the Secret Circus that's going to be released on March 23rd and it's by Constance Sayers essentially this is kind of like a historical historical novel that centers around circus and we have two time period and two setting one in Paris in 1925 and one is Virginia of course in the States in 2004 so back in the history time or back in older times the 1925 period we get this jazz age Paris and then we have this um, woman that is uh, committed to a secret circus and that's what I got from the synopsis and um, there's a lot of like ill-fated love sacrifices that she has to do because of her family and the circus description is super magical and I'm pretty sure it's like partially fantasy um, it's extremely ma magical and the reviews that I saw some people are saying if you enjoy the night circus you will really enjoy this book and I am the biggest fan of the night circus I absolutely love the night circus I always say it's like one of my if not my absolute favorite bo book of all time it's extremely magical lyrical the writing is beautiful and it's super like sad and beautiful at the same time. And I personally, out of all the genres, historical fiction is probably my favorite and the genre that I read the most. So I am extremely looking forward to that and that's coming up on March 23rd. And then the next one I believe is going to be released by the end of March, March 30th, and it's called The Rules of Wolves by Leigh Bardugal. Uh, I, again, I'm a huge fan of Leigh Bardugo's writings and I believe that's the Grishaverse universe once again. I was first introduced to Lee Bardugo through Six of Crows. I think that was a duology and I absolutely adored it. I remember I was actually like traveling alone in Europe at the time and I was just like downloading the ebook on my phone and like reading it up at my hostel in the middle of the night and like tearing up when um, certain things happened. I don't want to ruin anything I haven't read it already. Bye. So the first one in this duology is King of Scars and I read it as soon as it was released. I think I like listened to it on audiobook and it was okay. I didn't I wasn't attached to it as much as Six of Crows, but that but that universe is one of my favorite sort of YA fantasy universe. It's extremely angsty. And then this one I believe we got um, some sort of massive intrusion happening and what's his name? Nikolai Lansov, which is like the demon king. I think he has something um, dark living inside of him and then we have two more characters one is Zoya which is who is the storm witch we also have Nina um, and her nickname or title is the queen of mourning following six of crows duology and that just broke my heart I don't really want to delve too much into it but that storyline just really broke my heart but yes yeah, the, the three of them teaming up to fight against the dark army and I think it's Fyodor's Fear does army I can't pronounce it but anyway so it's um, the three of them uh, find a way to 
forge a future in the darkness or watch a nation fall at least that's what the synopsis say and i'm extremely excited for this book and i know we are getting some sort of tv show based on quite a few books and not just one particular series um we are getting a um a tv show based on a few different series but setting um in that grishaverse universe i think that's what it's called so yeah i'm super excited about that and that's coming up again at the end of march okay so the next one which will be released on april 6th and it's called Between the Bliss and Me by Lizzie Mason. This is definitely something that's outside of my comfort zone. It's not something I usually will read or pick up. Maybe back in the days when I was slightly younger because it's the YA contemporary. But the sort of introduction of this book really drew me towards, towards it because it talks a lot about mental illness and it's of course it's why contemporary so I'm, sh I'm assuming there's going to be some coming of age storyline plotline coming through it essentially it's about this 18 year old girl whose name is sydney and she wants to pursue a career or pursue her university studies in uh, nyu so she'll be moving away from her hometown and that's ex completely against what her mom has planned for her her mom I think I wanted her to stay closer to her, which is like a smaller town. And then while she was on this journey and stepping out of her comfort zone, I think she discovered something about her father who abandoned her when she was younger. I think he had some sort of drug addiction. And I think she stumbled across him in New York City uh, while sort of discovering her own identity and all of that because, you know, that age is sort of when you are just, your life is just so chaotic internally. At the same time, I think she has, there's a love interest and his name is Grayson, I believe, who is a guitar prodigy going to Juilliard. So that's super exciting. <laughs> um, apparently he's also not single, so we don't know what's gonna happen there. The next one is another book that I'm extremely looking forward to. It's called A Girl With Stars In Her Eyes, um, going to be released on April 6th. And it's by this author <laughs> called I'm not even going to attempt. So first of all, the, the title itself really was interesting to me because I just finished reading The Invisible Life of Annie LaRue by Victoria Schwab and absolutely adored it. And there's the whole concept of Addie having like seven freckles on her cheeks and forming like almost like a constellation. And that part is super romantic and magical to me for some reason. So anything with like stars and eyes and facial, fe facial features written in the title like i usually gravitate towards and then this one is essentially about this girl who is i think extremely talented in playing guitar so she pursued that as her career or passion and sort of made a name for herself um, in the indie rock band industry or that niche um, while at the younger age i think she had a love interest who was older a lot wiser but then they split when the boy or the love interest turned 18. So fast forward a few years, um, everyone's all grown up and then we have um, the main character, her name is Tony, and she was um, suggested by her friend to try, try out uh, a new rock band which is gaining some popularity and then while during that audition she encountered that boy once again. One of the lines that was, I don't know, that like really touched me was they say the road to stardom is paved with broken dreams and I think it was this book, maybe it was another one, but I think it was this book that was described as A, Star's, a Star Was Born, the Lady Gaga film. The setting is in that entertainment industry, which is something I read a lot in Chinese. <laughs> um, I think, I didn't mention it yet, but last year, because I was in such a reading slump when it comes to English novels, I read an excessive amount of Chinese BL novels. And I'll list a few if you are interested. Quite a few have been translated into English by fans online, which is amazing. Um, and I find myself really gravitates toward anything that's setting in the entertainment industry. It could be like idol bands, actors, um, singers, what have you. So this is exciting because it's, it's in English, which is um, a reading goal for me this year that I want to read fewer Chinese novels and read more English novels um, because um, I find myself like having a hard time focusing on reading English for some reason. So yeah, this is a book that's right up my alley. So hopefully it'll kick, it'll help me ease back into reading lots of English novels. I'm really looking forward to this one. 
and we have the next one similarly also a setting in the entertainment industry and it's something that it's so exciting because it's written by no, none other than Taylor Jenkins Reid who is one of my favorite authors that wrote um, Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and Daisy Jones and the Six and also I think I read her One True Loves which was okay it was not nearly as exciting to me than the and more interesting as the other two and I actually had the opportunity to meet her and like I think she signed my book, we took a photo, I'll insert a photo here, um, when she released Daisy Jones and the Six back in 2019, I think. Um, so yeah, I absolutely love her writing and once again, like the entertainment industry is something that I love reading about, like fictional celebrities is so interesting and the way she, you know, writes those stories are very complex, the characters are all very complex individuals, um, unlike you know, your typical sort of Hollywood characters that we think about, like the stereotypical kind. So yeah, like she, her stories has a lot of angst and that's something I love. Um, so this one is about a family of four famous siblings. They threw an epic um, end of summer party and something horrible happened in the end and I think that just completely altered their lives. And the four of them, one of them is a super famous supermodel I believe. Her name is Nina and she's the one that hosted this party and I think it's part of their family tradition. And we have another like famous, I think a server, um, a photographer and the baby sister and they all have secrets, they all have stories and something unfold and the accident that happened or took place at the party and I'm sure it's extremely dramatic and it's probably an exciting read that I'm really looking forward to. That will be the beginning of summer and that will be an excellent summer read and hopefully and I and I'm really hopeful and trying to be positive here that by then we can you know um, go back to normal again and I can go out and sit in the sun and read and have an in-person interaction with people that would be lovely. And the next one also released on June 1st and the title is called The Chosen and the Beautiful. It's a book by, again, not going to attempt her, her name, but she is, I think this is a debut novel, and the three keywords that Hunger reads, it was immigrant, socialite, and magician, and the three of them just sounded so, I don't know, it's so interesting and something that I would definitely enjoy, and I think it's a retelling of The Great Gatsby, again, Check mark. I absolutely adored Great, Great Gatsby, both the movie and the book. There's a lot of representation as well. She is, the main character is queer, Asian, adopted, and treated as an exotic attraction by her peers. So it's definitely a more challenging period for um, the minorities than now, back in the jazz age, where she being given her character seems very wild. Love the Great Gatsby, so retelling featuring an Asian character. I think that's absolutely amazing and I can't wait to get my hands onto that one. And the next book is called The Secret Keeper of Jaipur and I hope I'm saying that right although I highly doubt it. And that is by Alka Joshi. I have read the first book by her and that's the second one um, in the series. The first one is called The Hannah Artist which was released I believe last year and it was really famous. It's a historical novel and um, the setting is in India. And we have this very strong independent woman who goes through her life um, after run away from her abusive husband and navigates through the, the elites and I, she is the Hannah artist for the more um, wealthier woman so that's how she was able to support herself independently um, and this book revolves around a character um, that really helped her, a little boy that really helped her while she was, um, you know, setting up her business and it's about him getting involved in something kind of dangerous, I believe, some sort of smuggling. I'm not too sure what exactly is happening and I didn't read up too much on, on the synopsis of this novel but um, I'm super looking forward to it because um, The Hannah Artist was one of the books that I read with my condos book club. That's something new that I joined last year to keep me accountable accountable of on reading at least one English novel per month. Um, so The Hannah Artist was a really interesting read and I think it was the last book that I read, uh, the December one I mean. So we are getting a new new one in the series featuring different character 
and um, I think it's like 12 years after or something like that and also I heard that we're getting a movie or a TV show of some sort um, on of uh, the Hammer artist so that's super exciting too so next one um, deeper into summertime is called Mrs. March by Virginia Fato um, so this one is more of a thriller type that I, which is a genre that I used to read a lot about, but I sort of fell out of love with that genre, and I'm hoping to um, regain that interest and passion for this genre specifically. And it's featuring this house housewife living in Upper East Side, and I believe her husband is an extremely well-known author, so she's sort of attached to that literary circle. Um, apparently, he wrote a very renowned novel and featuring a woman and then somehow just randomly at a cafe she discovered that the book is apparently about her so she discovered some sort of really tr problematic stories and something that involves a death or some mental health issues i'm not too sure but this sounds very twisted but also very interesting again the, the elite upper east side circle is always interesting to read upon um, and we never really, really know what's happening behind scene, so we get to see a lot of the darker sides of the riches. So that's always exciting. All right, so the next one. Oh my goodness, I just um, realized that we are getting a new, new book from Sally Rooney in September on September seventh, and the title is called Beautiful World. Where are you? With Sally Rooney's books, again, she is definitely one of my favorite authors. With normal people, conversation with friends. I thoroughly enjoy them, but to be honest, I really don't know too much, like I can't remember too much on the plot, I just remember while reading it, I thoroughly enjoyed. With Sally Rooney's books, including Normal People and Conversation with Friends, I like, I feel like it wasn't so much of the plot that really drew me towards it, it's just her writing style that's sort of melancholic and slightly, slightly depressive but very complex um, and really it's like super thought-provoking in terms of discussion of human relationships and how one navigates through her life or his life. Um, I don't really know too much about it aside from it's a book written by Sally Rooney, that's really all I need to know and I I would love to read any work by her so any new releases is good to me so I'm super looking forward to that book as well. Oh, one last book since I said I'm limiting, limiting to the top 10 most anticipated releases, the last one is called The Dare to Know on September 14th. And I know there are a lot, of course, a lot of releases next year. And those are just some of the, some of the few that either I've read some um, other works by the author that I really enjoyed or it's you know a genre that I know myself that I would enjoy or something that I want to venture out into and step out of my comfort zone. So I think... Um, you know, I'm sorry if like, I didn't include a lot of the books that might be interesting to you. But the last one is by James Kennedy being released on September 14th. So this world, I think it's like a sci-fi fantasy sort of genre. Um, in this world that death are predictable and there's actually death prediction businesses. <laughs> and the main character, I don't believe his name was introduced. He is extremely talented at what he does, which is work as a death predictor for the company. Uh, however, he has he's unable to predict his own death and upon our introduction or the book's introduction to the character, we learn that he is supposedly already dead 23 minutes ago. So yeah, and he wasn't able to figure out what exactly happened. There's a lot of mystery involved and there's a love interest there trying to help him navigate through this really strange situation and I believe there are some rules against what you can do in terms of predicting your own death in that world and I am really looking forward to this book specifically as well and it's called Dear to Know and I think that's the world's name I'm not enti entirely sure so those are some of or the top 10 most anticipated release of 2021 that I'm looking forward to and I hope you enjoyed this video and apologize if I was not able to speak very eloquently or you know a little bit awkward just because it's been such a long time but I really hope that this video will give you some idea or suggestion on you know what books to look forward to reading this year or authors that you might be interested in to read um, some other words that's already been published so I really hope you enjoy this video and please subscribe and like this video and I'll see you next time Bye.